I've just wrapped up a six day solo adventure on the infamous adults only Virgin Voyages Valiant Lady. Virgin Voyages definitely have a raunchy reputation so I was curious to see how I would find it cruising alone. With stormy seas, pineapple neighbours and making friends at the solo meetups it was an interesting trip for sure. Especially because it's been almost two years since I was a crew member on the Valiant Lady. Can you believe it? So I got to see the ship from both perspectives. Through the eyes of a crew member and as a passenger and see how things have changed on Virgin Voyages since launching. This voyage began in vibrant Miami and carried me along with 2,700 other passengers to the not so sunny shores of Puerto Plata in the Dominican Republic and then onto Virgin Voyages exclusive Bimini Beach Club in the Bahamas. Plus we had two blissful days at sea to relax and soak in the onboard experience. I arrived at Terminal V around 1.30 p.m. and the embarkation process was better than expected. I was unable to log into the Virgin Voyages app leading up to my cruise which meant I had to do a full check-in at the port so I was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was. Along with other sailors I was waiting in the lounge for just over an hour before my group was ushered on board. The lounge however is very comfortable with lots of seating and charging ports. Now not being logged into the app this also meant I hadn't made any dining reservations. As I was cruising alone I wasn't too worried I did however want to ensure that during my cruise I would be able to dine at my favourite eateries. So, after getting on board at 3pm, the first thing I did was head to Razzle Dazzle on deck 4 where they have their dining team set up to take any reservations. Now they are here from 2pm to 4.30pm and then they move up to the red table on deck 7 from 4.30pm to 7pm which is a much more visible spot but you know what this means the whole world and his wife are trying to get reservations. So if you can, it's best to do it when you first get on board in Razzle Dazzle when there's a minimal queue. After ensuring this was done, I wanted some food. And like on most ships, everyone is directed up to the buffet, or in Virgin's case, the galley. So I decided to avoid the crowds and have food at the dock house, which serves up small but delicious meze plates. I had Spanish octopus, grilled shrimp and cheese polenta which hit the spot perfectly. I then made my way up to my cabin which I'm going to talk about a little bit later because I had a really unexpected reaction to this sea terrace cabin. As I came on this cruise alone, later that evening I attended the solo cruisers cocktail hour to make some friends and I was surprised at how many people attended the solo meetup. A member of the Happenings cast started by introducing themselves and then asked everyone in attendance to do the same. I really like that these solo meetups are hosted because it just helps break the tension and I actually think they did a great job of making everyone feel comfortable in an uncomfortable scenario. And I found everyone to be extremely friendly and open to having a conversation, which of course was a relief for me because I am a social person, so I didn't want to spend my whole time on board just talking to myself. But at this point, I didn't realize just how social this cruise was gonna get. Once we had all gotten acquainted, our solo group was taken across the deck to the pool area where the sail away party would commence. There's some ports that are just quite magical to sail out of and Miami is one of them in my opinion. So dancing to some classic tunes while watching the Miami skyline fade away was so much fun. Also, I like that at the sail away party, all of the Happenings cast were introduced so that you knew exactly who each member of the Happenings cast was, like when you saw them around the ship during the voyage. Now, as we set sail, people gradually began to venture into the pool. I considered taking a dip myself, but little did I know a storm was brewing and my time to get soaked was just around the corner. Also, I was hungry, so I headed to Pink Agave, which is my favourite. It's hands down the best Mexican cuisine I've ever had at sea. Also, the servers, I feel, were really good when it came to not making it a big deal that I was alone. Although I was getting some odd looks from groups of people sat around me, but I guess that's to be expected. And to be honest, I was so focused on my shrimp that I wasn't really bothered. The first full day of the voyage was spent at sea. So I got myself dressed and headed to the galley for some breakfast. I wasn't overly hungry, but when I worked on board, my favorite thing was this granola berry bowl. So I couldn't resist having it again. As I mentioned earlier, instead of the traditional buffet, Virgin Voyages has a food court called The Galley where everything is made fresh to order. All you need to do is scan the QR code at your table and pop up a little flag signaling to the wait staff that you're ready to order. The Galley can get quite busy in the mornings, especially on port days, but they do offer a 24 hour breakfast menu. Now during 
during my time on board, I also had breakfast at Razzle Dazzle on day three and The Wake on day five. I will say that Razzle Dazzle used to be the restaurant that people went to if they couldn't get in anywhere else, but I was told that they have recently improved upon their menu to try and change this. I definitely enjoyed the food here, but it still wasn't my favorite. So I wasn't upset to learn that they're making Brazzle Dazzle into a Chinese restaurant called Lucky Lotus on the newer ship. After my granola bowl, I went to the second solo meetup where again, there were some lovely people. This was also a hosted meetup in the SIP lounge. And to my surprise, there were a lot of faces I hadn't seen in yesterday's solo meetup. So I spent a few hours there just chatting with new people, most of whom were sailing alone like myself because they didn't have anyone who was available to cruise with them. And it was great to meet people who shared the mindset of if no one can go with you go alone I went out in the afternoon ready to soak up the Sun with some friends I had made at the solo meetup that morning understandably the pool area was busy so we stayed on the upper deck where there were still plenty of beds available now Virgin Voyages has faced its fair share of criticism about the size of the pool and while a larger one would be great it didn't feel overcrowded in my opinion and it was looking like an idyllic sea day blue skies calm seas but then the mood shifted dark clouds rolled in like a sudden curtain across the sky and what started as a light drizzle quickly escalated into a full blown downpour the wind roared across the deck tugging at towels and sending loungers scattering and within moments the bustling poolside had completely emptied i however stayed I love a storm, especially at sea. I paid the price, getting completely drenched and blown about in the chaos. This downpour lasted for a good while as well. So the sailors who were initially waiting on the sidelines to see if they could resume sunbathing got bored and made their way down to their cabin to dry off. Now, this sudden rainstorm moved the focus onto the indoor entertainment, which there was plenty of. As we were at sea, the casino and the shops were open. There was a puzzle challenge taking place, but there was also coloring, musicians on deck six, and various other events being held around the ship. I don't think I'd want to be on a virgin ship in bad weather for a long period of time, but for a few hours of rain, it was okay. There was enough going on to keep everyone entertained. And speaking of entertainment, while on board, I made it my mission to catch as many shows as possible to see just how much the entertainment had evolved. Virgin truly reimagined what entertainment looks like on a cruise, moving away from traditional formats to something much more unique. Bingo, for example, is hosted by the diva, who makes this game so much more entertaining. I was sure to see Jewel Reality because it's my favourite show. I also saw Misbehave for the first time. This is a new show that Virgin have brought to the ships as they've gotten rid of Never Sleep Alone. So this show is all about audience participation. It was honestly nuts. I really enjoyed the show and overall the humour and cheekiness still have that signature virgin playfulness but it's more refined now like the shows and moments are flirty and fun landing right on the line rather than teetering over the edge like past shows have done and speaking of adults only experiences judging by what i found it looks like some people didn't need the ship's entertainment so later that evening once i was ready for dinner i walked down the corridor towards the restaurant i was booked into and passed some interesting door decorations i found three pineapples just at the end of my corridor so god knows how many pineapple people were actually cruising and for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about you can watch this video where i explain what what these decorations mean. And one of my new friends from the solo meetups actually said she had noisy neighbors and they had these door decorations. And once I explained to her what these door decorations meant, she understood the noise. And they weren't the only ones crying in their cabin. I was, but for very different reasons. For those of you who may not know, my journey with Virgin Voyages started back in 2019 and I worked for them until early 2023. I was part of the team for the launch of both Scarlet Lady and Valiant Lady and those moments were actually some of the very first videos I shared on my channel. The ships are identical so as soon as I entered the cabin I was transported back to 2021 when I was quarantining in here. I just had so many memories on both ships nostalgia took over 
But in all seriousness though, these are the best cabins in my opinion. And once I stopped crying in the infamous red hammock, which is not a gimmick by the way, they are incredibly comfortable, I turned to one of my other favourite features, the remote control system, which lets you adjust lighting, curtains, mood settings, and of course you can choose a movie from all of the ones they have preloaded to watch. There are a couple of things I'd change about the cabin though. The bed, which converts into a couch during the day, isn't the most comfortable setup. Having a traditional couch would feel a bit more practical. If you're on one side of the bed, you'll notice there's no bedside table. And as far as I know, very few people ask to have their room converted during the day. Overall, the cabins are well designed when it comes to size and storage. With hidden compartments and plenty of space to squash away your things, it's easy to keep your room tidy, even if, like me, you packed half your wardrobe for the cruise. But honestly, I'm glad I did because the parties on board are no joke. From themed nights to fancy dress, there is so much to dress up for. Speaking of which, every night on board there was a party and it all kicked off with the sail away party from Miami, but the nightlife truly deserves its own mention. Now, I'm not someone who typically goes out out, but the pool party on Scarlet Night and the vibe in the manor were absolutely incredible. And as a former crew member, I'd always wanted to experience the manor. Firstly, because it was off limits to us as it's a guest exclusive area. And secondly, because crew members have a strict drinking limit to adhere to. So it was a real treat to finally enjoy the space without worrying about being breathalyzed and losing my job. But what I love about Virgin Parties is how the Happenings cast does such an amazing job of getting everyone involved right from the start. There's none of that awkward phase where people hover around the dance floor too shy to be the first to start dancing. They set the vibe from the get-go, breaking the ice effortlessly. And even better, they don't just disappear once the party's going. They stay on the dance floor with the sailors, keeping the energy alive and the momentum strong all night long. Now, for those who didn't party into the early hours and needed to sleep off the fun, the next day brought us into an exciting port of call, Porta Plata in the Dominican Republic. Unfortunately, the bad weather followed us with rain pouring down for most of the day. So I did decide to make the most of the onboard facilities instead. But fortunately, the final day of the cruise, we spent in the beautiful Bimini in the Bahamas, where the sun finally made an appearance. The beach club at Bimini is absolutely brilliant. And since it's adults only, you might assume it would be a non-stop party scene but it strikes a great balance. So while the DJ played laid back old school R&B across the pools, perfect for those singing along in the water, there were also plenty of people just soaking up the peaceful vibe. And if you wanted complete tranquility, the beach offered a serene escape from the music, which gave everyone the perfect way to unwind. And also there was a great menu at the beach club and the food is of course included. So I had rice and beans and chicken, which was absolutely delicious. But being back on Virgin really made me reflect on how much has changed since I first returned to the seas in June 2021. When Virgin Voyages initially launched, they leaned heavily into the adults only concept with a bold edgy twist that set them apart from other cruise lines. The ice cream parlor, for example, was playfully named Lick Me Till Ice Cream. And as I mentioned earlier, they had a risky show called Never Sleep Alone, where a few brave passengers were invited on stage to perform some cheeky acts like licking bananas. And believe it or not, each cabin originally came equipped with a vibrator and a fun fact is the Mac store on the Scarlet Lady was initially intended to be a toy shop. Now this bold approach, as you can imagine, turned out to be a bit much for the average cruiser, which led to Virgin Voyages being labelled as a sex cruise or a place for swingers, which was far from the brand's original vision. So over time, they've dialed back on some of the provocative touches, keeping the playful vibe while adding a touch more refinement to make it an attractive holiday for a wider audience. Now, seeing how far they've come, I am so impressed. The vibe is still fun and adults only, but with a lot more variety and entertainment throughout the day that appeals to all kinds of guests. But of course, the question I wanted the answer to, how did I find being solo on an adults only cruise? Honestly, it was fantastic. 
there were at least 30 other solo travellers, many of whom attended the daily solo meetups. Everyone was approachable, friendly and easy to talk to. And no, it wasn't just about looking for a hookup. I never once felt out of place or uncomfortable. Now, admittedly, I might have had a bit of an advantage since I used to work on this ship and felt at home in the environment. But if you have the budget and you're considering sailing solo, I genuinely think you'd be hard pressed to find a better experience. And while there were clearly quite a few swingers on board, it was all very low key and not at all intrusive. But let me know in the comments if you would consider sailing solo on an adult's cruise or whether you think it's a little bit too raunchy for your tastes. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.